First Corinthians 10, 8. Nor let us commit sexual immorality, as some of them did. And in one day, 23,000 fell. Nor let us tempt Christ, as some of them also tempted, and were destroyed by serpents. So this is talking about the Israelites coming out from uh, Egypt. On the way, they commit adultery, sexual sins, and also they tempted God. So this tells us that there will be serious consequences, that God can punish, God can kill, like in the early church. Uh, and Aeneas and Sapphira were killed when they, uh, when they told uh, a lie. They, they sold the house, but then they uh, told Peter that this is all the money. And then, and, and then Peter you know, said, uh, pointed the sin, and then they immediately fell dead. This is Ananias and Sapphira, okay? Uh, that's in Acts 5.3. So God can punish uh, with death. And then sowing to the flesh will reap destruction. Uh, Galatians 6.8. For he who sows the flesh will of the flesh reap destruction. But he who sows the spirit will reap everlasting life. And uh, sows to the flesh means following the flesh, following the lust. And then the carnal mind is an enemy of God, Romans 8, 7, because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So it's enmity, it's, uh, it's becoming an enemy of God. And also breaking one law breaks the whole law, James 2, 10, for whoever keeps the whole law and yet stumbles at just one point is guilty of breaking all, all of it. Because any kind of sin will affect our inner peace, affect ourselves, and affect our relationship with people, and affect our relationship with God. So it affects the whole person, not just, one, not just one small part. So even when a person in his life, you know, most of it is obeying God, and just one small part, 1% sinning, that 1% can destroy most of his life. It's not just 1%, it could destroy 60-70% of his life and we are called to keep perfection so now we talk about how to overcome sins God's nature to help us overcome sins God is holy he cannot stand any sin and God is love that motivate him to prepare salvation for us and help us overcome sins so he loves us he gives us strength to overcome sins and he's powerful and wise he can give us power and wisdom to overcome sins and He owns everything. He can bless us greatly when we pursue holiness. Now this is uh, in my way of preaching. Uh, when we have time, I'll talk about how uh, the God's nature uh, preaching method that we talk about God's nature and grace that uh, we can talk about His nature. His nature is His inequality. He is holy, He is love, He is powerful and wise and He owns everything. He is prosperous. So he can bless those who obey him. And God's grace, grace is his help for us, what he does to help us. God's nature is his inequality, his holiness, his, his uh, love, his uh, patience, kindness, uh, his abundance, all these are his nature. And his grace is what he does to us. So we know his inner nature is very beautiful and he does beautiful things for us. So God prepares salvation for us to deliver us from sin and forgive us whenever we repent. That's a great blessing that He forgives us and He gives us a new spiritual life that will naturally reject sin. When we have God, then we have this spiritual life inside us that doesn't like sin. And the Holy Spirit prompts us to repent when we have sin. He does not give up, give up on us. Even when we sin, He continues to move us and the Holy Spirit gives us motivation and wisdom to overcome our sin and more grace to help us. The Holy Spirit gives us joy when we overcome the sin that gives us motivation. And God puts good Christians around us to be a good example for us to follow. 7. God will bless us and help us to enter His perfect plan when we pursue holiness. So, now, in your message, when you preach, we don't have to name all the grace 
uh, related to that. It, it has to be related to that. So here is the God's grace to motivate us to obey Him, to, to, uh, to overcome sin. I listed here, but in your preaching, you can choose some. So you can ask God for wisdom. What, what does God do to bless me, to help me, to overcome sin or to have joy or to uh, have wisdom, whatever the theme is. If the wisdom is wisdom, then God's grace is how He gives us wisdom. How He gives us the Holy Spirit that can give us wisdom. And His Bible is full of wisdom. So whatever the theme is, then we keep the theme and talk about God's grace that help us. So here is God's grace to help us overcome sins. He has given us a, a salvation and a new spiritual life and the Holy Spirit prompting us and give us uh, Holy Spirit give us motivation and wisdom and also give us joy when we uh, overcome sins and then uh, and the Christians would, would, would be good examples and God will bless us when we obey Him. And now how to overcome sin? First is when we know that when we repent of our sin God will definitely forgive us. He will forgive our sins. And then uh, the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. This, O oh God, you will not despise. God will dis not despise a broken and contrite heart. David was very contrite. He was very sorry for his sins. And then when we are really sorry for our sins and want to leave the sin, then God is very happy. God, God will not despise that. And we can be more than conquerors. Okay, now here's the way to overcome the sins, okay? This is the five steps to victory. Hope you remember that. The first point is aware. Aware of the sinful thoughts. Aware of the anger, of the frustration, of the depression, of the despise of people, of uh, uh, the lack of interest to read the Bible and to, to obey God. And the second, believe that any sin or negative things are destructive. The second point is destructive. Three, the third point is apply biblical principle. What does the Bible say? What does the Bible tell us to do? And how does the Bible give us strength? Four, pray for, to have forgiveness and strength. And then five, choose to obey. Now there is a simplified three steps to victory. You just go to one, four, five. One, aware of the sin. And then four, pray for forgiveness and strength. And then five, choose to obey. Um, so let me give you an example. For instance, if we have anger, we are aware that we are angry. Now some people when they are aware of the anger, they will say, it's the other person's fault. He said something bad to me. He, he did something bad to me. Therefore, I'm angry with him. Therefore, I want to yell at him. Now that, he, that the other person sinned first and then we'll sin after him. That is also sin. So when we're aware of our anger, we don't want to let the anger control us. And then we believe that anger is destructive. It, can destroy our life. It destroy our relationship with people and with God and also take away our joy and, and God's perfect plan. And then what does the Bible say? The, the Bible say that uh, you know when even when we're angry do not sin and we try to overcome the anger as soon as possible and then pray for forgiveness and strength and then choose to obey. Now so how to overcome the sin? How to manage our thoughts? Now this takes wisdom. Whatever sin it is that we want to overcome, it takes wisdom. So for anger, usually it's because someone has done something bad. And then what can we, how can we change our mind? Then we'll say, okay, he has done something bad. It is his fault. And he cannot steal things from me. He cannot really hurt me. It is his fault. And if I get angry after him, then I will lose something because Satan will come to steal from me. So I don't want to be angry. Even if he's angry, even if he has done something bad, it is his fault. I just let it go. It doesn't matter. Because if I love God, God will prepare for me things that human mind cannot think of. He'll give me blessings. The person cannot steal from me. It's very important to believe that. Nobody can steal the blessings of God from us. So we say, Okay, if I get angry, I will lose more. And 
I can guide the person gently to help him to change instead of yelling at him, instead of being angry with him. I would manage my anger and say, okay, so we first change the thought. The thinking is that, okay, if I get angry, I'll lose my blessings. So I choose not to be angry. It doesn't matter. He cannot steal from me. And God is happy when I uh, manage my anger. It's not control. Control means I'm still angry, but I try to control it. Manage means to say, well, it's not, if I get angry, I'll lose more things. I will lose friendship. I will lose the, uh, the favor of God. I will lose the peace of God and I will lose more. So if I uh, talk peacefully with the person, I will be more blessed. So I will choose to be, choose to pray and then have peace and then I'll talk to him gently. Even if he yell back at me, I'll say it doesn't matter. I will not lose anything if I obey God. So that way, I, I don't lose anything. Even when he, you know, when he has, uh, he has sinned against me. And then when I don't get angry, I don't lose anything. So my thought. And then when we change our thought, our thinking that I should not be angry, we need to change our emotions also. So we need to give ourselves time and pray and relax. Lord, help me to be peaceful. Help me to put down the pressure, put down the anger. Help me to let go of the thing and also have compassion on the person because people get angry easily because they've been hurt by people many times so they hurt people easily so they hurt people easily it's his fault it's not my fault i don't have to be i don't have to get angry because of him and then okay another thing okay if someone has a depression sad feelings or oh, he's feel very depressed and unhappy uh, he's feel very sad oh because something goes wrong in his family uh, because something goes wrong in his work uh, because he loses something then he, he becomes very sad or he has no job and he becomes very sad then we know that it's destructive and the Bible says trust in God God will uh, rejoice in the Lord God will prepare for us thank God and pray to God and then choose to obey now how to choose to obey when we're sad we have thinking we have beliefs that we think that well when th things don't go right then then uh, I will suffer therefore I will be unhappy therefore I feel sad therefore you know and people think well when things go wrong then it's natural to be sad now it's natural to be sad but the point is how long do we stay sad if we manage the sadness immediately, the sadness can go away in a few seconds or a few minutes. But some people let the sadness stay for days and months and years and decades. The whole life is in sadness. Then the whole life is ruined. Because when the whole life is in sadness, he has no joy, no strength. He has no motivation to obey God. So we realize that sadness is bad and actually God is blessing me. Now, Many people don't see the blessings of God because they don't, uh, first they don't have a good relationship with God and they don't count the blessings of God. They just, and they just look at the things they don't have. Instead of looking at the things they have, they have many things, but they don't look at those things. They just look at the bad things, uh, the, uh, the things they don't have. Then they feel very bad. But we say, I have God and God is helping me. God is blessing me in many ways. And I just trust in God and He will bless me. Therefore, I continue to choose to obey God. I choose to love God. I choose to follow God. And I, I, and I can relax. I don't have to feel sad. I just thank God for everything. And I choose to count His blessings. And I thank God. So we change our thinking. Realizing that even when we suffer, even when we have problems, when we have difficulties, even when we have financial difficulty, even when we have problems in the family. Now problems in the family very often is caused by anger, lack of love, and also sadness, emotions, and also irrational action and words. So 
we need to manage our emotions and say, I don't have to be angry with the other person. I try to be nice. Even when the person is not nice to me, I want to be nice to him so I can bless him, I can help him, so I can build up the marriage. Then both of us will enjoy it instead of suffering from it. Many people just let Satan destroy the marriage. They are destroyed from one step, one step to another step, continue to be destroyed. They, first they don't, you know, they yell at each other, and then they don't like each other, and then they, they, uh, uh, they do things to hurt each other, and they don't care about each other, and then they uh, go out and seek other uh, 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 friends, opposite sex friends to satisfy themselves. So this will go higher and higher into difficulties and into destruction. But when we realize that when we have sadness, this is destructive, I don't want to stay in sadness, I want to live in joy and peace, even when things are not smooth. That's very important to understand that. Even when things are not smooth, we don't have to be sad. Sadness doesn't change anything. Sadness doesn't heal, sadness doesn't heal the marriage. Sadness doesn't heal our life. The more we have joy and relax and trust in God, the more joy we can have, more strength we have, and more wisdom we have to manage our life. Okay, an example is if a person finds that he has lust, then he first he realizes that this, this is destructive. It's destructive. And the Bible says that, you know, that since uh, adultery is sinning against the body, any sin is outside the body, but adultery is sinning against the body, is on the body. And then pray to have forgiveness and strength to choose not to live in lust. When we see a beautiful lady, a sexy lady, we want to turn the eyes away instead of uh, looking at a lady and saying, wow, how sexy she is. Uh, and we know that that's destructive. So we say, I want to turn my eyes from it. So where does the motivation come from? The, from four points. Four points. First, God is all powerful and is love. And God loves us. We are precious. Third, when we Trust in God, when we love God, obey God, and serve God, God is very happy and bless us. Fourth, if we don't love God, we don't follow God, we don't trust in God, when we sin, there is destructive, uh, destructiveness. So we understand that, that God is almighty and He loves us very much. He has a wonderful plan. And when we sin, that's always destruction. But when we obey Him, there's always blessings. So that's the motivation. Do you want blessings to your life? When you have blessings, when you're trusting God, then God will bless us. Then God will bless our whole life. So it's very important that we continue to trust in God and have the blessings from God. And, and uh, so we turn away from lust. So we need to build up this faith in God and the wisdom in God. Any kind of sin is, is destructive. Many people didn't realize that. And therefore, they live in sin, they live in anger, and they live in sadness, they live in lust, they live in, uh, you know, they say things that hurt people. All these are destructive. So we re need to realize that any sins are destructive. And we, you know, sometimes we say it's unfair, he sins against me, and then I, I want to yell back, I want to fight back. But they didn't realize that, uh, that any sin is destructive and it would destroy the life more even when the person mistreats me. It's better to forgive and understand this person has been hurt by people many times, therefore I have compassion on him and want, I want to bless him, I want to help him, and I don't want to be angry with him. I want to manage my anger. I will tell myself, uh, when I get angry, it's going to destroy my life, therefore I'm not going to get angry. I will just relax, I will just uh, put this down and not to be affected by him. So this is wisdom. So I hope that you understand this five step to victory, to overcome sins, uh, that any improvement we have, we can say, well, I'm improving. God is happy. So sometimes we're not, you know, some people are not perfect yet, but they try to improve. God is already happy. Then we can say, I'm happy, I'm improving. So that's very important that improve by 1% a day. We overcome the sins more and more then we can appreciate ourselves and say, thank God I'm, I'm improving. 
Of course, we know that sins are destructive and we want to stop the sins as soon as possible. But even when we, you know, sometimes sin and then we stop it as soon as possible, then it's still victory. And for me, I don't want any sin to stay in my life. I, I know that any sin is destructive because it will uh, destroy my life, my ministry, my marriage. And I, I see that God has given me many wonderful teachings. It's very uh, applicable. It's easy to apply. And I don't want to lose this. I don't want to lose my, my ministry. I want to be able to bless more people. So I pay attention to any kind of sinful thoughts in my life. So it's important that we manage any sinful thought. And also, it's very important for us to stay in joy all the time. Praise God all the time. God is happy with me, so I'm happy. I'm joyful. The more joyful we are, then whenever we notice we have anger, frustration, any negative feelings, we know there's something wrong. And then we can manage that negative thinking or emotions. So when we stay in joy all the time, God is blessing me, so I'm happy, I'm joyful. Then we have more joy and more strength, and then we have more strength to overcome sins. So I hope you can apply this. Mm -hmm.